Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode where we, in this episode, speak about Saqifah. Saqifah to Bani Sa'id. But before we go into the history of what happened in this location and in this scenario, let's take an introduction about the belief system of a Muslim towards the infallibility, infallibility of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. In Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, النَّبِيُّ أَوْلَى بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared that his messenger and his prophet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he has full responsibility and full control of the life and the livelihood of all Muslims and the mu'mineen, the faithfuls. And it is without a doubt with all certainty that all Muslims maintain this very specific point. And that point is the infallibility of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Rasulullah is sinless. No sins and no mistakes. Hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has wished that all Muslims and all Mu'mins, they submit totally and fully to the furthest extent to the wishes and the demands and the orders of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. If not, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not have commanded unconditional obedience towards the orders of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Because the commands and the sayings and the actions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam are the commands and the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? We do not read in the Holy Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and describes Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam when he says, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى That this messenger of mine does never take a step without the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will never in his lifetime speak a word, utter a statement without the revelation coming down upon him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we have such a belief in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, and that his wishes, his commands, and his orders are unquestionable. That we obey and we submit as a result of our faith and belief in this character who has been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our well-being, for our guidance, has to be 100% towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So, it is an absolute necessity that all mu'min and all Muslims obey Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam as this verse in chapter 33, verse number 6, comes and explains that the Holy Prophet of Islam has full jurisdiction over people. 
his command, his orders, took precedence over everyone's idea and everyone's opinion. Muslims at the time gave their opinions and what they thought that some things should go as long as their opinions were met. But the final decision was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, his orders, his opinions and his commands in social matters, in financial matters, in military matters, in all aspects of life, his orders and his final decision was the final word and final statement being the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In chapter 33, verse 36, we read in the Holy Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَارَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ ظَلَّ ظَلَالًا مُبِينًا Through this introduction and through the belief that all Muslims, every single male and female that witness that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that there is no prophet and there is no messenger and the seal of messengers is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Everyone on the face of this earth that says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah has to believe that when the Holy Prophet of Islam orders something and commands something, they have to obey him without any questioning. Hence, we come to the location of Saqifah. Saqifah in the Arabic language means the shed or the ceiling or the place that people sit under, underneath to get protection and cover from the heat of the sun. This Saqifah in question belonged to a clan of Bani Sa'd, Saqifah to Bani Sa'd. It is where the Ansar and the Muhajireen, the supporters and those who migrated with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam used to congregate on their daily matters, on their daily issues, sit around and speak. Hence, in this discussion, we come to know and understand why from this location and from the meeting and the gathering that occurred in Saqifah to Bani Sa'idah, it was the start of the fall of the flag of Islam, where the individuals that gathered in this gathering in Saqifah to Bani Sa'idah had met to agree upon standing against the rightful chosen successor and commander appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as stated on numerous occasions by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Let's go back into the final days of the life of the Holy Prophet of Islam. Rasulullah lying there on his deathbed, he made a statement. I want a pen and paper. I want a pen and paper so I can write for you a hadith, a narration, a tradition, that as long as you hold on to this tradition, you will never go astray. 
بدواتن وكتف why the people that were gathered next to the place of rasulullah and the room of the holy prophet of islam the holy prophet is lying there there were a few members of the family of the holy prophet and a few of the so-called companions rasulullah wanted a pen and paper to write a hadith tuni bidawatin wa katif li aktuba lakum ما إن تمسكتم به لن تظلوا بعدي أبدا. What was that narration? What was that piece of statement that Rasulullah, the commander, the messenger, the prophet, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the Holy Quran has stated that no mu'min and mu'mina should question. The spoken orders of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And whoever does will go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the verse says, فَقَدْ ظَلَّ ظَلَالًا مُبِينًا A very clear disobedience and a very clear deviation towards the path of the hellfire. But unfortunately, a couple of those present in that gathering in the last days of the life of the Holy Prophet of Islam said this very tragic statement that will still echo in the ears of history. <laughs> when they described that the Holy Prophet, that this man who has been Chosen by the heavens, who has been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to convey his message on the face of this earth has been overpowered by pain. And he's started saying things that he is not conscious of. When the man named by Umar ibn al-Khattab comes and says, describing the Holy Prophet of Islam, Now the Sunnis and the other schools of thought, when they come to narrate this narration, they say, They do not say that Umar came and said, they come and say that this individual did not utter such a statement. Why? Because if they do say that he uttered such a statement, it would be used negatively and it will question his iman and faith in the Holy Prophet of Islam. And they do not want that to happen. Inshallah, in the next episode, we'll come to discuss what that narration and that hadith that the Holy Prophet of Islam wanted to narrate to us that if we had held all Muslims, if they had held on to it, they would have never gone astray from the path of Islam. But because they left it, because they did not allow Rasulullah to write that hadith, then today millions of Muslims have taken the path of deviation away from the Holy Quran and the teachings of Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us another opportunity to be at your service and at the service of the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin